Welcome to Simplify Pharma. Today, we will learn in detail about cleaning validation. Please like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. We all are aware in pharmaceutical industry, there are n number of equipments and instruments present. So cleaning of those equipments and instruments is equally essential and especially after a product has been manufactured. It is very critical to ensure that the subsequent products to be manufactured, they are not contaminated. If we will not clean the equipments or instruments that we have used to manufacture a particular product, then the next batch, if it is of a different product, what will happen? There will be a cross contamination. This is the reason we need to remove residues of previous products. And this process, this process is called as cleaning. Now in this diagram, you can see, see there are so many surfaces when we see pharmaceutical industries, there are so many equipments, there will be dirt that, that will deposit over there, there will be, uh, you know, uh, traces of products that we have manufactured. So we need to clean everything. This is a reason cleaning is done in pharmaceutical industry. How this cleaning process helps? It ensures that equipment and surfaces are properly cleaned. This is our main aim behind cleaning validation. This is crucial for maintaining product quality and preventing cross contamination. Also, we need to prevent microbial contamination. Only then we can say the equipment or the instrument that we have used is properly cleaned. So when we clean everything, we also need to document that. We need to document everything we do in pharmaceutical industry. So when this cleaning process is done and documented, it is called as cleaning validation. Pharmaceutical industry is just like working in a kitchen. I know it sounds funny, but yes, both the process, they have a lot of similarities. Now just imagine you're working in a kitchen and after cooking one dish, the second dish, we need to clean the vessels. We need to clean the utensil. We need to clean the platform where we have been cooking. Why? Because to avoid cross contamination, that is the biggest issue. In order to avoid cross contamination, we use clean containers. We store the food separately. We clean the platform where we are cooking and we clean the equipments that we use for cooking. We keep the food separately that is used in different recipes. We clean our hands, dishes uh, before serving. So all this is done to avoid cross contamination in a kitchen in the similar manner in pharmaceutical industry. We follow all the steps in order to avoid cross contamination. We use clean equipments, we use clean instruments, then we make sure the uh, ingredients that we are using for different products, they are stored properly. They are stored also separately. Then the workspace, the workstation should be clean. The tools that we are using, that should be clean. And obviously all the cleaning measures are in place, they are taken so as to avoid cross contamination in a pharmaceutical industry. Thus, we can define cleaning validation as a process of attaining and documenting sufficient evidence to give reasonable assurance that the cleaning process under consideration, it does and or will do what it proposes to do. So mainly what we are doing we are documenting the cleaning process that is called as cleaning validation. We can also say it is a proof that cleaning process can effectively remove residues of previous product and it can also prevent microorganisms from developing. So as per that cleaning agents are used. After cleaning equipment should be dried and stored properly. The storage conditions of the equipment before and after cleaning it decides whether it will support further microbial growth or not. One thing that the pharmaceutical industries should keep in mind that cleaning validation, it should not be carried out by these industries just because it is a requirement of regulatory authority, but to ensure patient safety. So patient safety is something that should be kept in mind by the pharmaceutical industries 
only then product purity can be ensured when it comes to pharmaceutical industry drugs you know drugs the medicines we take them directly so if the uh, purity of the medicine safety efficacy of the drugs it is not ensured it can even lead to patient death that's why we have to be very careful when it comes to cleaning procedures in pharmaceutical industry when we are making a protocol several factors we need to take care of such as detergent water quality sampling personal and rinsing duration now why detergent a good detergent is the one that is easily removed by rinsing during the cleaning process now we have to make sure when the cleaning process is carried out the detergent that we are using after rinsing that detergent is completely removed it should not remain in the equipment or the instrument therefore we should know its composition before use it should not have residues that are hard to remove by rinsing with water the people conducting the process they should be trained that's why we have to take care of personal because they should have knowledge of cleaning procedure the standard operating procedure that is sop that is followed what is the validation protocol if they are aware of all these things only then they can carry out cleaning validation properly then the design of equipment decides how it will be cleaned how much time it will take to clean sampling is required to determine the residual level present in the equipment after cleaning now that residual level can be of the detergent or the level of uh, previous product if we are using tap or potable water it is used for cleaning then hardness can be accounted for by using uh, various cleaning formulation it can also be a problem if the hardness in the water varies if we are using the water by municipality corporation in that case sometimes the municipality mixes hard water with the soft water so it can again be a problem so this is also a reason that potable water that is tap water is not used in pharmaceutical industry we usually go for purified water or water for injection where more sterile product is to be manufactured let us see what are the various steps involved in cleaning validation the very first step is to identify the objective of cleaning validation what is the objective of cleaning validation what are we supposed to clean and why are we cleaning it for example you have to identify equipment utensils surfaces that require validation it is mainly done to minimize cross contamination to determine efficiency of cleaning process to do troubleshooting in case problem identified in cleaning process and to give suggestions to improve the process then the step 2 is to develop the cleaning validation plan which we also call as validation protocol now what all is included in validation protocol we define objectives acceptance criteria sampling methods analytical methods and we document everything so developing cleaning validation plan is like creating a validation protocol then what is the step 3 that is selection of acceptance criteria now this is to ensure that cleaning process that we are following it can perform whatever it proposes for example not more than 10 ppm of any product will appear in other product this is the acceptance criteria that we have established step 4 is to select appropriate analytical tool or method to detect residues or contaminants depending upon sample that has to be validated or uh, maybe the equipment or the surface so this is step 4 is mainly about selection of analytical method then step 5 is to is the cleaning process so how do we carry out the cleaning process we follow the sop that has been made in the validation protocol so we follow sop while executing the cleaning procedure and the process should be in routine validation protocol then coming to step 6 this is the main step that is a sample collection this is to ensure that cleaning process that we are following it can perform whatever it proposes so we collect samples immediately post cleaning uh see when i say the cleaning process it performs as it proposes that means 
Sample collection is mainly done after cleaning. Once the cleaning procedure is done, the sample is collected means whatever the equipment or the surface that we have cleaned, we will collect a sample from that surface or equipment and then you know analyze that sample to determine whether the cleaning process has been done efficiently or not. Step is sample analysis. Once we have collected the sample, then we need to analyze the sample to detect presence of any contaminant or residues. Only then we can determine whether the cleaning process has been carried out efficiently or not. Then the next step is result evaluation. That is, do we meet the predetermined acceptance criteria or not? See, we evaluate the results by comparing them against the predetermined acceptance criteria. And if the results obtained, they are within the specified limits. We can then say that the cleaning process is validated. And if it doesn't, then the, we have to find out the source. Why? Where? What is the reason why the cleaning process is not properly carried out? Then the next step is documentation. As I said earlier, in pharmaceutical industry, we need to document everything. Whatever procedure we follow, we need to document it. So we need to document from start to end everything. Then the next step is continuous monitoring. That is cleaning validation process is implemented and it is analyzed periodically to ensure the effectiveness of the cleaning process. All this is done to ensure that the validation procedure, it is in compliance with regulatory protocols. There are different cleaning methods that are used like manual cleaning method, semi-automated, fully automated. Then if we take a look at the source of contamination, it can be either cross-contamination cross product of one product into another, then product contamination by a foreign material. It can also be a microbial contamination. These are the different factors that influence cleaning validation. The product, equipment, facilities, cleaning methods, cleaning agents, sampling, the acceptance criteria. We have to keep in mind cleaning method should be very sensitive. That is, it should be able to remove all the contaminants and residues. And if we talk about the sampling methods, there are two sampling methods that we'll, we will be discussing in further slides. There are two types of sampling methods, indirect sampling and direct sampling. Indirect sampling is like uh, this also called as rinse sampling and direct sampling is also called as swab sampling. In swab sampling, a small area of clean equipment, it is swabbed. The swab is extracted and then added to a diluting solvent. Then the extract is examined by a suitable analytical method. And in rinse sampling, residue is collected from overall equipment, not restricted to any particular location. We take rinse samples, that is equipment is cleaned by several washing cycles. It can be by using water for injection or by purified water. And then the sample that we take, that is a rinse sample, we analyze it. This was all about cleaning validation. Let's take a look at all the cleaning validation steps once again. We have to identify product, equipment and process. Then we have to calculate the limits, prepare the cleaning method, protocol. Then we have to collect samples to uh, determine whether the cleaning has been carried out, analyze it. Then we have to also inspect visually the instruments, equipments that has been cleaned. Only then we can confirm the effectiveness of the cleaning validation. Thank you and do subscribe to my channel to stay updated with more such videos.